Hi, my name is Ivana and I serve here on the ministry staff at Broward Church. Have you ever walked into a room that you weren't supposed to be in? Maybe it was intentional or maybe it was on purpose, but when you walk into a room you're not meant to be, you feel it. I remember when I was young, my parents would have couples over for Bible studies or discipleship times. I would sit in my bed and try to conjure up any excuse I could to come downstairs. Once I did come downstairs, I quickly realized I wasn't wanted. It first started out with the room going quiet. Whatever conversation was being had, I wasn't meant to be a part of. Whatever they were talking about had to be paused. Once everyone realized I was there, it was all eyes on me. Everyone in the room would just stare, wondering why I wasn't in my room. Soon enough, my dad would usher me back upstairs, he would tuck me into bed, and he would remind me that it's my bedtime. It was very clear in that meeting, I was not supposed to be. Today's devotional is about a bold woman who, fought her, who found herself in a room she wasn't supposed to be in. And the feeling of not belonging rang so loud and so clear, it's recorded in, in all four of the Gospels. Each one gives different details, each account disclosing new information, but each is very clear that she was not wanted at that dinner party. I'm going to read the John account today. John 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took a pint of pure nard and expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of the disciples, Judas, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to keep himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was attended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. When I read this story, I am blown away by the determination of this woman. I can imagine the stares she received, the things people might have been whispering as she walked into the room. In Luke, it describes her as a woman who lived a sinful life. She knew walking in there that she wasn't going to be welcomed and it wasn't going to be easy. As she pours this expensive perfume on Jesus, she begins to cry. She actually cries so much, she is able to clean Jesus' feet with her tears. It seems that she is expressing both reverence and gratitude. Reverence because she realizes this man who has healed the lame, given sight to the blind, and fed thousands will soon die to give others eternal life. Reverence because she got it. Reverence because she understood this is God walking among us. Gratitude, just to be able to have this moment, no matter who was around. Her gratitude led her to be bold, to be brave, and to give generously. She gave the best she had because she understood God was giving her and us the best thing he had. The cleansing she was doing to his feet is nothing compared to the cleansing she was receiving in her soul. This makes me think that the closer you get to understanding Jesus, the more reverence you have for him. As your reverence grows and understanding of Jesus grows, you can't help but be overwhelmed with gratitude. And both these things, reverence and gratitude, produce bold action, generous giving, and in return, comfort from Jesus himself. I'm reminded of a beatitude in Matthew 5.5, 5, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. At the end of the story, after the awkward glances, after the mention of wastefulness, Jesus comforts this woman and tells her her many sins are forgiven. And what Jesus said rings true today. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her.